India has tested the Agni missile five times in the last six years. Why do we continue to test the same missile again and again? India now has five versions of the Agni missile in its armory. With each launch, India has managed to modify and improve the missile. The first version of the Agni missile, which was tested in 2012, had a range of only 700 kilometers. The one that was test fired today has a range of 5,000 kilometers. That's how far we've come. With each upgrade, new technologies are incorporated into the Agni. And this includes better navigation, guidance systems, and engine power. There are other benefits too. Each upgrade means that higher reliability, longer shelf life, less maintenance, and enhanced mobility. And needless to say, each successful test also renews India's sense of pride. Let's now talk about day five of uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's visit to India. It took him to Mumbai today. It was a packed day which began with a breakfast with India's top business leaders, Anand Mahindra, Adi Godrej and Chanda Kocher, to name a few who attended. Prime Minister Netanyahu has been making a strong push for Israel among the business community in India throughout uh, the last four days. The emphasis remained on innovation today as well. Israel is an innovation nation. India is an innovation nation. We must be innovation nations to seize the future. If we don't, we'll fall back. If we do, we'll define the future. After attending a business seminar, the Israeli Prime Minister paid tributes to the 2008 Mumbai terror attack victims. Prime Minister Netanyahu later paid a visit to the Khabar House as well, which was known as Nariman House when it was attacked back in 2008. Moshe Holzberg, better remembered as Baby Moshe, also joined Prime Minister Netanyahu at the Khabar House. Moshe was two years old when he lost his parents during the 2611 attack and he was saved by his nanny, Sandra Samuel. Mr. Netanyahu inaugurated a memorial built in the memory of the victims of the 2008 attacks. He also seems to have saved the spike anti-tank missile deal and we've got it from the horse's mouth. רבבות, אולי מאות אלפים של אזרחים, כולל ילדים, עומדים ברחובות, מריעים למדינת ישראל. בעקבות uh, שיחות שהיו לי עם חברי, ראש הממשלה נרנדר מודי, ממשלת הודו הודיעה לנו שהיא מחזירה את, ה, את עסקת הספייק למסלול. זה מאוד חשוב, ויהיו עוד הרבה עסקאות. Reuters, quoting Israel's Channel One television, said the original deal for $500 million will be reduced by half. It means that the Indian Army will get less than the planned 8,000 missiles and 300 missile launchers. Negotiations are expected to begin between the Indian Ministry of Defense and Israel's Rafale Advanced Defense Systems, which makes the, uh, the spike. Rafael had already set up a joint venture with Kalyani Defense in Hyderabad for the purpose of component assembly. So what is the spike now? And why is it important for the Indian Army to acquire something like the spike missile system? The spike is a missile system to destroy tanks. It comprises a launcher and missiles. It is carried by infantry soldiers and can be assembled for firing in 30 seconds flat. The spike is important for many reasons. It provides defense for infantry soldiers against enemy tanks and armored vehicles. It has a range of about two to three kilometers. It can be used even at night. Currently, the army uses the Milan and Concours anti-tank missile systems that are old and cannot be used at night. The army has been looking to replace them for many years now. The DRDO says it can develop a similar missile in about three years. This is after Defense Minister Nirmala Sitaraman noted an observation by her predecessor, Manohar Parikar, in a file. It said that if an anti-tank missile could be developed in India, it should be the preferred option. Why buy? The spike deal was therefore cancelled for a while. But here's the catch. The DRDO has been developing the NAG anti-tank missile for years. This is a heavy system mounted on an armored vehicle. It is not for use by infantry. The NAG underwent successful tests last year, but the army wants more tests before it is ready to take them 
So the Nag project is delayed. The Milan and Concours are old. The army needs something in the interim until DRDO delivers a suitable anti-tank missile for use by the infantry. Therefore, the decision to buy limited numbers of the Israeli spike. Those who are Bollywood there uh, to greet the Israeli Prime Minister. What else has Mr. Netanyahu accomplished in this rather long six-day visit which ends tomorrow? When he landed in India, there was discomfort on two fronts, essentially. One, the cancellation of the spike deal, which, as we've just told you, is now back on track. The other was about India's vote at the United Nations General Assembly against U.S. President Donald Trump's Jerusalem move. But all that, we're told, is history now. Not just the spike deal, there is a whole list of tangible achievements that the Israeli Prime Minister can showcase when he returns home. Mr. Netanyahu was accompanied by one thirty member delegation and the big focus of this visit was also expanding business ties with India. Israel is, is seeking to expand trade ties with India, aiming to raise exports by 25% over the next three years. A delegation from the Commerce Ministry here in India will visit Israel next month to start talks in this regard. They also are going to discuss further, discuss further a free trade pact between the two countries. On the very first business day of his trip, in fact, Benjamin Netanyahu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrapped up nine key agreements expanding ties beyond defense. The two sides signed agreements on cybersecurity cooperation, oil and gas sector, air transport, film co-production, research in homeopathy, space science and technology, expanding bilateral investment, metal air batteries and solar thermal technologies. Israel is also investing up to $68.6 million in India to boost cooperation in tourism, technology, agriculture, innovation and other areas over the next four years. It will also spend more than $40 million over the next five years to expand ties in industrial research and development and technological innovation. In Ahmedabad, the two leaders opened the iCreate Center for Entrepreneurship and technology collaboration between Israeli and Indian startups innovation was in fact a common catchphrase of the Israeli Prime Minister throughout his India visit this was as we've been saying the first visit by an Israeli PM to India in 15 years